what is performance anxiety and how you can change it within days. Stay tuned episode and find out. Hi there, modern man. I am here today with the famous celebrity hypnotist, Tim Schur. I'm so glad because we've been trying to schedule this session for a long time. He has appeared on national TV, on ABC, NBC, and CBS, and has been on the TEDx stage and captivated audience worldwide as a hypnotherapist. And so we are going to have him today to deliver gold on our mindset and how we can live a better, healthy, wealthy life. And Tim, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Dr. Ann. It is a pleasure to be with you today. Well, let's just dive in and just get to the good part here. So what is anxiety and why do so many people have it? Anxiety is a feeling that I'm not safe, that something bad is going to happen and I'm not going to be able to handle it. And because I'm not safe, it might mean that I'm also not worthy. There's something wrong with me. And if there's something wrong with me, then I won't be loved. And our biggest fear is that we're not good enough. And because we're not enough, we won't be loved. And so we constantly have this fight or flight system going off inside of us, warning us that something bad is going to happen. There's going to be impending doom. And worse, you're not going to be able to do anything about it. And so it causes us to constantly walk around feeling scared, worried, stressed, pressured. And of course, that has a tremendous effect, a negative effect on our body as well. And so anxiety is your brain's way of trying to protect you, but often the way it's protecting you is causing more pain than it's helping. Us humans have this terrible habit of trying to avoid pain by doing things that cause more of it. Wow. Why is that? Because we know that it's bad. And why do we do things that is not good for us and putting us in a negative state? So we're not doing any of this consciously or on purpose. When we are children, we are absorbing the ideas and the beliefs of those around us, of the culture and the society and the adults that are raising us. And so we absorb these ideas, these opinions, what I call beliefs about who we are, how other people are, what kind of world you live in. And because we all go through what I call big T and little t traumas, you know, little t traumas are when you get embarrassed, you feel humiliated, you get hurt. Someone doesn't pick you to be on the team. Somebody breaks your heart in a relationship when you're 16 years old. These traumas that happen, it causes our brain to make a belief about it. What does it mean that that happened? And then we have the big T traumas. The big T traumas are abuses, physical abuse, sexual abuse, a death in the family, a major illness, something that is very scary. And so our brain can often make a belief without our permission and without us even knowing that it's happening. And all of a sudden, we're left with this idea that I'm not safe. You can't trust people. I'm not worthy. I remember working with a guy one time, and he was pretty successful in life, but he just could not seem to get ahead in his relationships. And so I took him through a session, and we found out that when he was like seven years old, he was working with his dad on a car. Now, he's seven. He doesn't know anything about cars. His dad asked him for a screwdriver, a specific one, a Phillips screwdriver, And the kid handed him the wrong one. And his dad got mad for some reason, yelled at him and said, you can't learn anything. You can't get anything right. And that boy had this experience where his father figure, where the person in his life, the authority in his life was telling him that he's not good enough and he never will be. And his brain formed that belief. Now, his dad didn't mean that. He was just mad. Mm -hmm. And the little boy didn't have the resources at the time to recognize dad's just blowing off steam. And so... He internalized that and that belief ended up affecting him his whole adult life because at that deep level, subconsciously, he always felt like things weren't going to work out. And he had this idea that because things aren't going to work out, he was just going to kind of mess it up or sabotage it before it happened. Like I'll hurt you before you hurt me. And it had a very damaging effect on his relationships. Wow. So does that happen more when you're younger or can that also happen as an adult? And the reason why I ask is that let's get relate this to sexual health. So let's say a man is with a partner or with his wife. And I have actually heard a story like this where a patient came to me and, and he was with a girlfriend and the girlfriend just faintly said, oh, you know, you're not the same size as my last boyfriend. 
and that uh-huh. has impacted him. Yeah. You know, going forward, that was like years ago. It was done as an adult. So I wanted to ask you. So as an adult, are we able to Teflon that more, or are we still get impacted by the same as when we were younger? You can certainly still be impacted by that. I think the core beliefs, your foundational beliefs, are formed when you're a kid. They say that by the time you're eight years old, you have most of your foundational beliefs that you're going to have for the rest of your life in place, unless you intentionally go in there and upgrade them as an adult, which most people do not do because they don't know how. And so, if you have some strong core beliefs, then when you're in a relationship and somebody makes a comment like that, you're able to blow it off. You're able to change it. You're able to have a honest conversation about how that hurts your feelings. You're able to take that statement and say, "Well, so what? Size doesn't matter. It's how you use it." Or here's the qualities that I bring. Or if they were so great, why are you with me? And so you have the ability to do that. But because most of us are riddled with insecurity, because most、mm-hmm. of us feel like we're not good enough. We take that as your other person was better than me in the bedroom, and I'll never measure up. And then every time they go to have sex, they start thinking in the back of their mind, "Oh, she's thinking about them. I'm not going to be able to satisfy her." And then all of a sudden, our plumbing's not working, and then that reinforces the belief that there's something wrong with me, and I'm not good enough. So、mm. you can certainly have those experiences as an adult, but a lot of it, like I work with veterans, and they'll go to war when they're 20 years old, 21 years old. And then they have PTSD when they come back from war. And when we actually do our session, you'd think they revert back to a traumatic situation that happened during war, but actually they almost always go back to something that happened when they were a little kid. And when we、mm-hmm. resolve it when they were little, and we upgrade the beliefs when they're younger, it seems to have an effect that goes up through the years, and it kind of releases them from the、uh, negative symptoms of post-traumatic stress, even though we didn't deal with those situations specifically. So the mind is amazing, and the trick is to upgrade the beliefs, the root beliefs, the foundational beliefs, your core beliefs, because that's what's influencing you most. Wow, that's awful. Now I didn't ask you this, but let's kind of backtrack a little bit and talk about what's a hypnotherapist and what's hypnotherapy. Because to me, before I met you, I didn't know that much about it, other than、no. what I see in a Vegas show and what's happened there. And I know that's. A lot of it is showmanship, and so what is hypnotherapy, and how is it so powerful in changing your core belief and get you to a wealthy, healthy mindset? Well, that's a brilliant question, Doctor Ann. So basically, I didn't think that hypnosis was anything but clucking like a chicken. What other people think of it, where it's gimmicky and it's fake, and you're just trying to get people in some magical state, and then you can get them to do whatever you want them to do, and that is false. So what it really is is it's the study of the power of suggestion, and the power of your unconscious mind or your subconscious mind, and that's really the part of you that controls the show. You might tell yourself that I'm not going to eat junk food today, and then ten minutes later you're eating cookies. Why? Because you have your conscious and your subconscious mind. Your conscious mind is the willpower part of you, the analytical reasoner inside of you, the one that's constantly deciding what's good or bad, right or wrong. But then that part of you only controls about twenty percent of what you do. Then you've got your unconscious or your subconscious mind, and that is controls eighty percent of what you do. And that is the part of you that stores your beliefs. That's the part of you that runs your habits. That's the part of your mind that keeps your heart beating a hundred thousand times a day, and you don't even have to think about it. It's the part that keeps you alive. I have my degrees in psychology, but the reason that I stayed with hypnosis for thirty years is because it helps you to go to the Real source of the problem. So imagine that you have a weed. Like your mind is a garden, and every garden has flowers and weeds. And the flowers are the positive beliefs that serve you and empower you, and the weeds are the ones that don't. And so we have this mental weed that's sabotaging our health, our money, our relationships, the relationships with others, our self-esteem, our performance in the bedroom, all kinds of areas. And what most people try to do. Is they try to use affirmations or they try to do yoga, and that's like cutting the top off of a weed. So they're doing all these things, but they're not getting the results that they want. Other people will go to YouTube and try to use rah rah motivation and just do it and just go for it and just believe in yourself. But that's like throwing dirt over the weed and just pretending that it's not there. The weed always grows up through the dirt. So I created this one belief away method. I facilitated sixteen thousand individual sessions. 
because I was trying to figure out why do people keep getting stuck even when they really want the result, even when they're trying so hard, how come they're not getting what they want? And so I made that an obsession. I had to figure out how to get people to have the breakthroughs when they felt like nothing was possible and this is never going to happen for me. And then we would make it happen. And so kind of like what you do, how you help people in such extraordinary ways, you're like, you got to be the number one doctor in the world when it comes to freeing people from erectile dysfunction and sexual challenges. And so because you made it your study and your obsession to help people as well. So when we go and we work with somebody, what I do is I find the root of the weed and I pull it out at the root and then plant a flower. And a horticulturist, somebody who works with flowers, and one time she told me, she said, if you pull enough weeds and you plant enough flowers, it changes the soil and produces more flowers naturally. And so I'm pulling the weeds, the mental weeds out of people's minds and out of their hearts, out of their souls. And then we're planting flowers instead. So many empowering beliefs that it changes the soil of their mind and causes them to show up in a whole new way. Wow. So from our discussion, it doesn't take that long to pull out the weed and plant the flowers and change the soil. And what you said, it can take two to six sessions and that's it. Yeah, for just about everything. And most people have a significant life enhancing breakthrough in the first 30 minutes. And regardless of what their goal is, I've just gotten really good at immediately finding the weed, the most responsible one. It's like the first domino that if you push that over, it knocks all the other dominoes over in a positive way. And I'm able to find that first domino and then pull it out right then and there and replace it with self-love, self-acceptance, because the deepest fear that we have out of all of them, out of the fear of rejection, the fear of abandonment, the fear of failure, the fear of success, all of the fears that we have, the core one is the fear of not being good enough. And because I'm not enough, I won't be loved. Mm. And that is the one that I have found. And it doesn't matter what the goal is. It almost always comes back to that. So we go and we pull that weed out. We replace it with self-love, self-acceptance. We give new tools, new support, new resources. And because we're doing it in the subconscious mind, in your unconscious mind, because we're working with the part of your mind that's the boss, it's able to produce results instantly. You're almost instantly able to feel lighter, to feel a shift, to have more motivation, more confidence, more productivity, more follow through. It immediately shifts your performance in the bedroom or in the office or anywhere else. It's uh, pretty extraordinary. It's changing the game. I'm so blessed to be able to come on shows like yours so that I can get the word out there and let people know that there's a much more effective approach than therapy and just endless amounts of medication. So how is hypnotherapy different than doing psychotherapy with a psychologist or a social worker? Enlighten us on that. Most psychotherapy uses cognitive behavioral therapy, which is like uh, positive thinking on steroids, which again means that they're addressing your conscious mind. They're trying to help you to understand why you're doing what you're doing, which is fine. They have this idea, this false belief that awareness is change, but awareness isn't change. Like, you know that eating an apple is better than eating a donut, but you'll go eat that donut anyway. So it doesn't matter if you know. What matters is what are the beliefs that are driving those thoughts? What are the beliefs that are driving those behaviors and habits? And most of the time, you're not aware of it. So in therapy, you're talking through it. You're digging up every terrible thing you've ever been through and then going over it over and over again, just trying to have a positive attitude. And it can take years and it can be painful and most people will go through therapy for 10 or 20 years and not really seem like their life is that much better now some therapists out there are extraordinary and they produce beautiful results so i love the field of psychology i'm in the field and i love that people have a heart of wanting to help others usually with the issues that they have like i had lots of anxiety and so now i'm an expert in helping free people from anxiety but talk therapy is just too slow and it's not getting to the root of it. It's just constantly mm. cutting off all the top of the wheat. And so mm. with this one belief away method and the hypnotherapy, we're able to access what's really going on lightning fast. And then we're able to upgrade it and bring the new beliefs and the new resources that if you would have had them at the time, then things would have been different. It wouldn't have been considered a trauma. But because we're young when usually we have these experiences, it ends up negatively impacting us decades later and you know i work with clients that will be in their 80s 
and they're still trying to get over the bad relationship that they had with their mom or with their father. And we're able to, in a few sessions, to resolve that. And it's like a different person. They're just so much happier, more confident, more peaceful in life. It's beautiful. Well, I'm amazed at what you said that within two to six sessions, you can have more transformation than somebody going to therapy for years. I have friends that have been going to therapy for years and they still suffer from their anxiety. One of my family members has been in therapy for years and it's helping, but it still needs to go. But it seems like working with you or hypnotherapist, it's like a few sessions and you're done. And you may need to come back for maintenance if there's a setback, but you're kind of done. I find that amazing. Is it because you're working at drawing out the root cause of the problem, pulling out the weeds and putting in the flowers? Is that why it's so brief? The transformation is so quick? Yeah, because we're going to the root issue. It's like you have a bucket and it's got a hole in the bottom of the bucket. You keep pouring all this water in the bucket and it's not filling up. If you go patch the hole, the bucket fills up. But most people don't know where the holes are and they don't know how to patch them if they did. And so I figured out how to do that. And my one belief way approach is a cut above regular hypnotherapy as well, because a lot of hypnotists have been trained to get you in that magical state of mind and then just give you affirmations and then you're going to change. And I found that's not the case because you can tell yourself a hundred times, I'm a wonderful person. I'm going to perform great sexually and everything's going to be great. And then you get in that situation and all those affirmations go right out the window because the old fears and the old programming kicks in. And so I focus on finding the programming itself and upgrading it. And then people have tremendous power and greatness inside of them and get to unleash it or tap into it perhaps for the first time. So it's just a much more effective approach. Now, you're not always just done. You solve that issue. But human beings always need to be developing themselves. It's like when you're driving down the road in your car and you're going 60 miles an hour, you should always keep your hands on the steering wheel if you want to arrive safely at your desired destination. Well, that's what personal development is. Personal development is ongoing support and encouragement so that you are always learning how to show up in situations feeling safe and productive and resourceful and resilient. And without that, then you're left with all the negativity that's around you. So we still need positive sources of inspiration coming into our life to live the most fulfilling life. However, the core issues that most people have, once we resolve them, they stay resolved. So having said that, how to free yourself from anxiety and bad habits? Well, let me give you a three-tip strategy that you can use. It's not my one belief away method because we don't have the time for that right now. However, let me give you a three-tip strategy. So it's just three questions you ask yourself. Question number one, what would I have to believe to feel this way or to think this way or to behave this way? What would I have to believe? And you might have to ask yourself that question numerous times. It's like cutting through the layers of an onion till you get to the core real belief that you have. But what would I have to believe to think, feel, or behave in this way or have this experience happen to me? If I'm attracting experiences to me, what would I have to believe to attract these kinds of situations? And then once you get a core belief, you get down to why you have to believe that I'm not good enough or I'm not going to be able to handle this or that it's not going to work out anyway and I'm going to fail or I'm going to be humiliated, whatever the core belief is. Then the second question is, well, where did I get that opinion from? Because remember, Mm. it's an opinion. Most people think it's a fact. I'm dealing with facts, but you're not. You're dealing with opinions. And so the story you're telling yourself is an opinion. And there might be some facts in there, but most of the stories we tell ourselves could certainly be improved. So uh, we ask ourselves, well, where did I get this opinion from? And then you Mm. try to think about it. And most of the time, that opinion never came from us. It didn't originate in us. It was because of experiences that we had growing up or because somebody Mm. made a comment. And so, of course, I always think, well, what happened in your childhood that would cause you to attract somebody into your life that would tell you that somebody else's penis was larger than yours? I mean, that's kind of very rude. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so, so it's a valid question. So question number two is, where'd you get this idea from? And then question number three, which is the most important one, is what would you rather believe instead? If you can believe anything you want, and you can, because you have the right to any opinions that you want. You're a powerful, amazing human being, and nobody's better than you, and nobody's worse than you. So uh, you deserve whatever it is that you want inside. 
And so you ask yourself, what would I rather believe instead? I'd rather believe that I'm more than enough, that I'm going to be able to handle this, that I've got through all kinds of stuff. I'll get through this and that things are going to work out better than I hope for. You start focusing on what you want instead of what you're afraid of. Your mind works like a GPS. Whatever you focus on, whatever address you type into that GPS, it starts to take you there. Your mind works the same way. Unfortunately, people are always focusing on what they don't want and what they're afraid of. That's why they keep going there. So start focusing on the outcomes that you want and obsess on getting there. Wow. And oftentimes writing it down and seeing it every day will kind of reaffirm that instead. So the three things, what would you have to believe? What would it take for you to change your belief? Not what it would take to change your belief. Just what is the belief that's driving oh, these thoughts the or feelings? Okay. All right. So yeah. what is the belief? And then number two, where is it coming from? Where did that come from? And then number three, what would you rather believe instead? That's right. That's pretty powerful. We'll make sure we put that in the show note as like something. And so if you're listening to this or you're watching this on YouTube, write this down. Because these are the really good three tips here. And I wanted to tell you a story, a patient of mine. And this is not too uncommon. I have worked with at least now 8,000 men with ED and sometimes in patients with premature ejaculation or delayed ejaculation or inorgasmic and difficulty with ejaculation. And oftentimes I myself feel that it's easier to fix the physical problem that causing the ED than it is sometimes to change the mindset. Because I've always believed it. it is the case that the brain is a larger sexual organ, not the organ below the belt. Because it all starts in here, because it starts in here, there's nerve and there's hormone that's released and it goes down to the nerve down your spinal cord along your autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic, parasympathetic, it goes to your heart and then it goes to your blood vessels and then it goes to your sexual organ. And so I have a patient, he's 62, he had been married to his wife for like the last 30 years and been struggling with ED for about five years and ED medication doesn't help anymore. He has a loving relationship. His wife is also about the same age as well too. And now he's retired. He wants to be able to spend more time with his wife and rekindle the relationship again. And so he came to see me so he can be able to perform again. And we were able to get him to have functionality and have erection with doing stem cell shot, shockwave therapy, Botox to the penis, taking supplements and changing his diet and his exercise regimen. It is simple as that. But he come to see me, this is three months later, and he said, I'm still not getting erection. It's not working. Well, I said, well, let's take a look. So we did a test, we call penile Doppler ultrasound, where I give him a medication called Trimeth to induce an erection. And then I look at the blood flow and the tissue of the penis, because you can only assess that when a penis is erect. And we're able to look at that with the ultrasound and it revealed that he had good blood flow in his arteries, good expansion of the penis muscle to block the venous congestion. So that's how the erection is maintained. And so that tells me that the plumbing yeah. is working, the muscle is working, the nerve is working, but why isn't he having erection with his wife? So what's going on there and like I said I see this not too uncommonly and so I know the functionality wise it's working but what's the tie between that and probably from the heart all the way up to the brain here can you enlighten us about what's going on with him and how he can overcome that yeah so think of a race car driver and you have this race car driver and he gets in this car and the car is great it works great but then as he's driving he drives the car right into the wall now, what most people would do is they would look at the car and they would say there must be something with the mechanics of the car, but then they don't ever check the driver. It's often the driver in the car that's causing the uh, accidents. And so you're taking care of the mechanics and making sure that everything is working beautifully, which is essential and necessary. If you're doing that and we're still driving into the wall, we're still not getting the results that we want, then we got to take a look at the person inside the body, the mind and body. You got to address both often. 
even though you're so good at helping people to be able to get the results without having to do any of the emotional work, but sometimes you need it. And so I've helped many people over the years with ED, and it's a variety of beliefs that they are not aware of that ends up coming up in their mind. For that person, it might have been something that he experienced when he was younger. You know, maybe he is captain of industry and really confident and strong, and now he's retired from that. And he's and he has these insecurities. He's trying to reconnect with his wife. He's not the young guy that he used to be. And now he's not telling you this, but every time he's walking into the bedroom, he's sitting there in his mind telling himself, oh man, I hope that this doesn't go bad. I hope that I'm not able to get it up. I hope that she doesn't get mad at me. I hope that this isn't going to be a disappointment again. And then he's literally talking himself out of an erection. He's creating a negative self-fulfilling prophecy. And so people often won't tell you that they're doing that because they're not even aware that they're doing it. And so other people, I remember uh, working with a guy one time that it was his second marriage. And he, every time he tried to have sex with his new wife, he felt guilty like he was betraying his previous wife. I've worked with guys that never addressed it, but they had some sexual abuse when they were younger. And so now it has affected that that's carried into the bedroom. Of most guys, though, it's just this insecurity that they're not going to be able to satisfy that person. And then the person's gonna, not going to be happy with them. And then it pushes that feeling of not being good enough. And so I say that all the time because that's what constantly keeps coming up is this just general anxiety and insecurity inside of all of us that somehow in some way we're not going to measure up. And then it eats at us and then it messes with us physically and emotionally. And so then we kind of almost get into a habit of this expectation. It's kind of like insomnia. You just keep telling yourself, what if I can't sleep tonight? What if I can't sleep tonight? And then I'm going to be exhausted in the morning. Mm. And then you're so worried about it that you activate that parasympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight response. It releases adrenaline in your body and then you can't turn your mind off. And then you wake up in the morning exhausted. And then you get into a habit of doing that every night. And so it's a matter of upgrading those beliefs and then also causing your mind to create a sense of peace and a new way of connecting with your spouse so that it's not just about how you're going to satisfy her with below the belt, but also there's other ways of connection and intimacy that sex happens before you're in the bedroom. Just teaching guys how to hold their hand or give somebody a hug or a warm compliment or bringing flowers so that there's a way of instead of having all this pressure that it's almost like a beautiful ritual that's happening usually it's not always spontaneous you know, it's kind of a mm-hmm. plan mm-hmm. <laughs> or hey, yeah. Friday morning <laughs> yeah you know, and well so- it's interestingly him and his wife uh, has a planned day it's usually Saturday I think right. three to five or something and this is the time that <laughs> hey we're gonna do it I'm like that's a lot of pressure that's it's a like, lot of pressure Saturday yeah. three o'clock three to five is the only time that's available right. for them right. to have sexual activity so but yeah. he so much want to be able to perform but he can't so why the self-defeating behavior keep pervading yeah. in his mind Yeah, a lot of people want to lose weight. A lot of people want to stop smoking. A lot of people want to remain calm when their spouse is pushing every button they have. It doesn't really matter what you want. What matters is what you're programming. How's your subconscious Mm -hmm. mind programmed? Is it your best friend or your worst enemy? Do you have unconscious beliefs that are empowering you or sabotaging you? And so usually if you really want it, you reach out for help. And then that's how you end up meeting you. And now they're here meeting me. And then they get the results that they're looking for. And so if you've taken care of everything physically inside of them, then there's often some emotional component. It's either an unconscious belief that we have to upgrade or it's Mm -hmm. some story they're telling themselves in their conscious mind and they need to learn how to tell a new story that produces the outcomes they desire. Excellent. Yeah, now I can see that connection there. But is it something that he needs to work with a hypnotherapist or you to kind of unravel that weed? that is yes. deep inside because that would be something hard that you can kind yeah. of self-diagnose on even using yeah. the three tips that you had mentioned is really working yeah. with somebody that can kind of help guide you to find out what weed that is and plant the right flower into yes. that for sure you know we have one belief way hypnotists around the country that can help with that it's very difficult to see your own blind spots it's very difficult to be objective with yourself you need someone who's trained 
in this approach to be able to just help you figure it out, get it resolved and get you moving forward with your life. Very difficult to do it on your own. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think as human beings, we all have insecurity. We all have fears. We all feel I'm not good enough. Right. No matter who you are, I think that just being human at times. I have that feeling sometimes myself when I'm giving lectures at a big conference with other <laughs> big names. I'm yeah. like, oh my God, am I going to be okay? I'm going to be good enough to be on the yeah. same level as they are. And I play competitive tennis as well too. So <laughs> yeah. When I'm yeah. on the court, I have to plant a lot of flowers in my brain when, <laughs> and take away that weed because when I'm yeah. out there, it's in your mind. So I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about as well because when i lose it's not gonna affect who i am as a whole but it does right. impact upon you because i know i've lost a tournament where i should have won and, right. and it's way heavily on me for like a month mm -hmm. and i keep persisting on that until i had to kind of learn to be able to get rid of that that negative thought so that is so powerful and in fact ever since i start meeting you and learning about what hypnotherapy is about it's really changed my thought a lot on how my patient can benefit from this mindset change and oftentimes people don't want to hear oh you know there's something going on in my mind that is making me like this because it almost seems like a negative thing how mm -hmm. do you as a doctor as myself or a family member approach a person or a patient or their loved one about maybe thinking about hypnotherapy, but to frame it in a way that is more positive and interesting rather than, oh, maybe it's in your brain. Great question. So yeah, a lot of times if somebody says, oh, it's all in your head, it feels like they're blaming you. Mm -hmm. And people will be like, no, I'm not. I'm doing everything I can. I'm trying everything I can. I'm not doing this. I'm not sabotaging myself. I'm trying to make this happen. And that's accurate. But if you have beliefs that you're not aware of, that's what we call blind spots. You can't see them. If you have these beliefs that are impacting you and you're not aware of it, then that's what's keeping you stuck. Something's keeping you stuck. And so when I'm working with somebody and they ask me that same question, I usually will say, well, let them know that all the most successful people in the world have coaches. Like Olympic athletes who are the best in the world at what they do, they all have a coach. Professional sports teams who are the best at what they do, they get paid millions of dollars to do what they do, they all have coaches. Mm -hmm. President of the United States, they all have advisors and panels and boards. They all have coaches. So the most successful people have a coach, and I'm a mind coach. So I can help you figure out what's getting in the way and resolve it very quickly, or you can spend the next several months or even years trying to figure it out on your own. And maybe you will. It might take you a few years, but you're smart. Maybe you will figure it out. But do you want to take the next few years or you want to get it done in the next couple of hours? So how would somebody kind of have a quick conversation as a recommendation go to a hypnotherapist to say what you exactly what you just said in that manner? Or what would the conversation be? The first part about having a coach is so that people don't feel like, what are you saying that I'm not good enough or there's something wrong with me? Mm -hmm. that I have to have somebody else for me to get what I want. It's not something that says that you're less than. What it does is it shows that you have wisdom and understanding that the most successful people have somebody to help them get there. Got it. Okay. So it's a sign of intelligence, not a sign of weakness. So that's why right. we use the story of the coach. And then right. the reason that we use hypnosis is because it helps you get right to the source of it. Now, you can go to therapy and talk about your problems for years, or you can go to a hypnotherapist and get right to the source of it. And that's why my method is called the One Belief Away Method, because I truly have found over 30 years of doing this that you're just one belief away from having a huge breakthrough. So if you shift from I can't perform in the bedroom to I'm totally comfortable in the bedroom, or I'm not good enough to I'm more than enough, then it completely changes how you think, how you feel, and how you behave in life, how your body you know, responds. And so, yeah, I would just come across and say that hypnosis, because hypnosis isn't what it was 20 years ago. Before, people mm -hmm. would be like, I'm not doing that. You're going to let the devil in me. You're going to try to control me, you know, because of movies that they saw. But yeah. these days, people are like, hypnosis is awesome. All the celebrities use hypnosis. It's really cool. You're not using one. You should. They're great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Ellen DeGeneres stopped smoking on national TV on her show using a hypnotist. So the most, oh, the I didn't most know famous that. people. Oh, yeah. Almost all these celebrities and famous singer Adele had terrible stage fright, went to a hypnotist to help build her performance. Jim Carrey, when he played the Grinch and he had to wear all that makeup, he was freaking out. He needed hypnosis for that. 
there's so many Kevin Costner, uh, Matt Damon quit smoking using uh, hypnosis, all these A-list players. And these people have the money and the resources to do whatever they want. And they're using hypnotists. That's why awesome. I'm out here in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm doing out here in Hollywood, helping people behind the scenes that need confidentiality to be able to get the results that they're looking for so they can go out there and entertain the world. So tell us about your One Belief Away program and the special offer for our listeners right here. Yes. So my clients are always asking me for what they want so that I can give that to them. And I'm always saying, yes, let's do that. And so people are saying, I want the best personal development tools, but I want to really fast on the go. I don't want to go through courses. I don't want to read books. I just need something I can listen to when I'm driving, when I'm walking, when I'm uh, doing the dishes, something that's on the go, quick and easy. And I want something that I wish you could just download the best insights and secrets into my brain so that I could just think, feel, and behave like the most successful people in the world. And then I'd also like a little live support so that if I have a question, I can actually ask you so I don't have to go through another program all by myself. So I said, well, I've got just the thing. And I created this wealth mindset program. Now, when I say wealth mindset, it's not just about money. It's about living your most authentic life, living a life where you feel confident, you have purpose, you feel more fulfilled in life. And so through my work, I have created friendships with the most amazing and the most successful personal development trainers of the 20th century. People like Bob Proctor, Brian Tracy, Les Brown, Tom Hopkins, Seth Godin, you know, Mark Victor Hansen, who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul. I mean, the masters of uh, self-help and personal development. And so we've had conversations and did programs. And so I have that material and I put it into this course. And so every month it's a membership course, kind of like Netflix, but way more valuable for your happiness in life. And so put into this monthly membership, by the way, people are like, can you make it affordable as well? Cause I don't want to have to spend thousands of dollars on it. And so we did that too. We've got this course where every month you get a valuable lesson with me and one of these amazing trainers. Month one is Bob Proctor and he's like the father of the law of attraction. One of the main guys that was in the movie, The Secret. So a big shot in the world of personal growth. And so it's me and Bob and uh, we got a video or an audio or an ebook of it so you can consume it any way you want on your own time, right through your phone. Then I took the best insights and I turned it into a brain training hypnosis session because I'm very good at that. And so now you can just listen to it at night. There's no extra time needed. You just let me train your brain and download the most amazing wisdom from Bob Proctor right into your brain. So you start using the law of attraction to manifest what you want in your life. So it just comes more easily to you. And then I've got a secrets checklist. And then once a month we get together with me and everybody that's in, in our community here and we do a live call and I answer your questions which is really great because normally you don't get access to the people that are making this program. And I like to make sure that people have access to me. It's $200 a month, $199 a month to be a part of this. But because of the relationship that you and I have, Dr. Ann, we are going to go ahead and uh, put a special link in there so that if your viewers and your listeners and the members of your community want to do this, then you can get 50% off for the whole first year which brings it down to $97 a month. That is the deal of 2024. So the link's That's in there. That's right. I encourage thank you. you. You can cancel anytime. You'll love it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And I'm much appreciative that you're able to do that for our audience and for my patient. And he's also including a gift as well, too. Yes. So if yes. you're a listener of this, not only you get the special 50% off pricing of his One Belief Away system, but also a free gift. Can you tell us about that gift and how our listener and our patient can get that? Yeah. So I always say that you have to address both parts of the mind, your conscious and your unconscious mind. So your conscious mind is the part of you that uh, keeps the hands on the steering wheel driving down the road. That's what the Wealth Mindset Program will give you, daily inspiration. If you want to work on the subconscious beliefs, then I'm going to give you a copy of my new video course. It's called The Power of Your Unconscious Mind. It's a $100 program. I'm going to give it to you for free, and it will help you understand what drives your thinking and behavior and habits at an unconscious level. It's a really powerful program and how to use the power of your mind to create your life by design. If you go to timsure.com forward slash gift, G-I-F-T, and my last name is spelled S as in Sam, H-U-R-R, timsure.com forward slash gift then you can get a free copy of that today. We'll make sure to put all the link in the show note everywhere. And then also the link also for the wealth mindset, uh, one belief away system 
as well. So Tim is being very generous, but he's also available if you want to work with him one on one. If you have less time and more resource, and you want quick result, you can work with him one to one as well too. And he tells me within probably two sessions, even the first thirty minutes, you can see transformation. And、Peter. if somebody wants to、uh, work with you one to one, how can they contact you, Tim? We could put a link in there in the show notes as well. That's very limited. I don't have a lot of time. I do like to、uh, do individual sessions with people just because it helps me to continue to improve my method. Because I spend most of my time training therapists and the healers of the world and how to get better results for their clients. So I like to stay plugged in, and so I have some spots available. And we can put a link in the show notes if、uh, you want to schedule a free consultation. Guys, it is very, very, very unusual for you. If you sign up for the program to get some coaching time with Tim, I would jump on that now before he gets so popular that you won't be able to get <laughs> some time with him as well. And I know he's doing this because of our relationship together, and I'm much appreciative of that, Tim. And so, having said that, I thank you for. Being here with me and delivering value, and I'm just blown away by hypnotherapy. I just have to thank you for opening up my mind on this arena and just having and meeting you and learning more about it. And honestly, I'm gonna like dive into it to get this free gift and just kind of explore it because three months ago you asked me, I was like, "What? What's hypnotherapy?" Is what I like. I said I see on TV and see in the Vegas show. But what have you have shown me is that it's real, is transformative, and celebrities and a lot of people are using it to quit smoking, overcome trauma, anxiety, and oftentimes we don't know we have that. I think we all have. Have some type of weed. Who we are as human being, and knowing that weed and putting in the flowers into it will probably make you to a person you want to be. And you said, "What would you rather believe instead?" Because I know that when you believe it in your mind, you can execute it as well. And as for myself, my 2024 to be more healthy than I was in 2023, and I'm working on that. Like last night, I was reaching out to grab that peppermint bark that I love over the holiday, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I started putting. Oh my God! That thought. Okay, and you're gonna be fitter this year. You should not eat that. So I took my hand away, and you know what I did? I threw it in the trash. And I said, if I don't see、you. it, I won't have any temptation. <laughs> That's right. Great job. Great job. <laughs>、uh, but during the holidays, definitely, I was giving in to that during the holidays. So, so mindset is a big thing, and I appreciate our time together. So, having said that, modern man, I hope that you find value in this. I would really appreciate it if you follow Tim. Check out his program and follow our podcast and our YouTube channel. Like and comment and subscribe. Let us know what questions you may have, and we may bring Tim back again to answer those. I hope that opens up your mind on other possibility and open up your mind that you can and should have your best sex life, even when you're seventies and eighty years old. Is knowing that yes. There are treatment out there, and yes, that you can have a mindset for that. Because I want you to know that it is possible, and you do not have to resort to medication or surgery to get there. So, having said that, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Are you struggling and frustrated in finding a solution for ED? Well, I have just the thing for you. It's called the Modern Man Club, led by yours truly, Doctor Ann. Together. We're redefining male sexuality and embracing a holistic approach to overcoming ED without medication or surgery. I will provide a protective environment for a community and proven strategy to overcoming ED. It is a safe place. Expert coaching by me and my team. We provide holistic approach to overcoming ED and an empowering community of men with ED supporting one another and. Lots and lots of educational resources. Visit mensexualityclub.com at the link here on my right, and connect with us and reclaim control over your sexual health. I'll see you there.
Thanks for listening to the Sexual Health for Men podcast. If you love this episode, then please take a screenshot on your phone and post it on Facebook, Instagram, or wherever you post. And be sure to tag me and let me know why you like this episode and what you like to hear in the future. That will help me know what's great for you. And I would love to give you the most incredible free gift designed to help you improve performance quickly. Go to my website at sexualhealthformenpodcast.com to get the book, The Five Common Costly Mistakes Men Make When Facing ED. I would appreciate it if you subscribe, leave a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen, and just know that you can have sexual vitality for life. I appreciate you. Until next time.